Welcome back to Webwise. Recently, on the 6th of July, the first live event of Tailwind Connect 2023 took place. During the event, Adam Wathan, Sam Selikoff, and Steve Shoger, the creators of Tailwind, shared a lot of interesting information about the innovations in Tailwind CSS and the company's new products. The recording of the presentation is available on the official Tailwind Labs channel and lasts over an hour and a half. However, for those who don't want to spend almost two hours watching the entire presentation, we've prepared this video where we'll share all the important news from Tailwind Connect 2023. The video will be packed with information, so make sure to watch until the end. The presentation started with Adam Wathan talking about how terrible it was to write CSS code in 2014. Back up until about 2014, this is how I wrote all my CSS. The CSS in every project I worked on was always the first thing to just spiral completely out of control into this unmaintainable spider web of fucking bullshit. That's why Adam started reading a lot of diverse material on how to write beautiful CSS. The words written by Nicholas Gallagher in the article about HTML semantics and front-end architecture had a big influence on him. And then one day I stumbled across this article by this guy Nicholas Gallagher, who's the creator of Normalized CSS and was working at Twitter at the time, called About HTML Semantics and Front-End Architecture. And in that article, he makes the argument that the most reusable components are those with class names that are independent of the content. Adam took this idea as the foundation and a few years later released the first version of Tailwind CSS, version 0.1.0. According to Adam, its design at the time strongly resembled Mac OS. Since then, six years have passed, and the latest available version of Tailwind CSS is version 3.3.3. Currently, Tailwind CSS is being installed over 25 million times every month, and it has been installed over 300 million times in total, making it the most downloaded CSS framework on NPM. Adam also mentioned that Tailwind CSS has become very popular recently and is being used by companies such as Shopify, Netflix, and OpenAI. Even ChatGPT was built using Tailwind UI. After that, they demonstrated the capabilities of Tailwind CSS, where they live edited colors, margins, and more, showcasing how easily it can be done with Tailwind CSS. There were quite a few cool examples, but the most interesting was yet to come. Next, they introduced Tailwind CSS Oxide, which is a new experimental engine for generating CSS. The first feature of Oxide is the unified tool chain. In short, this means that we no longer have to specify and configure post CSS and auto prefixer plugins every time we create a new project, it's enough for them to be installed, and the new Oxide engine will recognize them. The second important feature of the Oxide engine is its speed. The project build time has increased by more than two and a half times, from 330 milliseconds to 130 milliseconds. This is an incredibly good result. All of this became possible thanks to Lightning CSS, an extremely fast CSS parser, transformer, bundler, and minifier developed by Devin Govan. In addition to its incredible speed, Lightning CSS also provides simplified configuration, built-in at import processing, syntax transforming, and more. If you ask me about the advantages this gives us, regular users, I'll answer. In the Tailwind configuration file, we no longer need to specify the content property since it will now be automatically determined using automatic content detection. In the post CSS settings, we don't need to include post CSS and auto prefixer. Just include Tailwind CSS and it will handle everything for us. In the input stylesheet file, it's no longer necessary to include Tailwind CSS base. Tailwind CSS components and utilities. Instead, we can simply include Tailwind CSS, and it will work the same. Configuration of Tailwind CSS directly in the CSS file thanks to the theme selector. With its help, we can configure the same properties as in the Tailwind CSS configuration file, such as color or font family. Considering all these points, it turns out that the Tailwind CSS configuration file can be completely removed as noted by Adam himself. And then you look at this config file and it's like, huh, that's weird. Why the fuck does this file exist? After this comprehensive presentation of the new Tailwind CSS Oxide, Adam moved on to demonstrating the company's new product, 
Catalyst, a React UI kit for Tailwind CSS. The main difference between Catalyst and other UI libraries is that it is not installed via NPM, but directly integrated into your project. The main idea behind creating Catalyst was to make this library your own over time. One of the main reasons that you'd use this thing, you'd open up the components directory, you'd find something like that text field component and the label. I can just come in here and change it. And you're not, yeah, you're not editing code that's going to get overridden next time you run npm install. Like, this is your code. It is designed to be easily customized using Tailwind CSS, and over time, it becomes tailored specifically to your project. Catalyst is designed to provide well-written starter code that can be quickly and easily adapted to your needs. Adam compared this project to the currently popular Shopify, where, according to him, you simply skip the first six levels of the game. After that, they showed us prototypes of possible designs and talked about interesting tricks that can be used in Catalyst. Catalyst uses Frame Emotion for complex animations, and I really liked how easy it is to customize these animations thanks to Tailwind CSS. By combining arbitrary values and responsive breakpoints, you can customize animations based on the screen size. They demonstrated this feature with a modal window example that slides up from the bottom on mobile devices and pops up on desktop ones. That concluded the presentation, and Adam thanked everyone for attending the first live event for Tailwind enthusiasts. From my perspective, the presentation was incredibly informative. They showed us many incredible possibilities that can greatly reduce development time and make the process much more enjoyable. This idea was the foundation of Tailwind from the very beginning, and it's what made Tailwind such a successful project. As mentioned earlier, numerous well-known brands and companies already use Tailwind in their products, so I believe every web developer should be familiar with this tool. The goal of this video was to provide you with all the important news from Tailwind Connect 2023 in the shortest possible time. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please support the video with a like and a comment, as a lot of time went into analyzing and writing the script. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.